Alright. Alright guys, police officer realizes there's a head in the bucket. Okay, this is the victim's house. So they're just uh, straight up getting straight to it, guys, but... Uh, I kind of feel nauseous thinking about this, man. Because you know how pizza is like kind of... It kind of reminds me of like fleshy... Kind of like, you know, stuff, bro. This is fleshy, like, you know, dead flesh or whatever. Like you're biting in... Some say it's biting into your enemies or whatever, man. But, no, nah, it, it's too much. Is that... <laughs> Oh, gosh. There's a bucket that's all... They got Pac-Man over there. This is the moment cops realized there was a head in the bucket at the crime scene. Guys, the commentator does not sound happy that there's a head in the bucket right there, man. That... that. That's just sad. This is sad. But little did they know, the entire case would only get Look at that pillow, bro. more and more horrifying. On the 23rd of February. That's an interesting house. It looks like a pretty big house, guys. I, I live in a small house, so. February 2023, police visited the apartment of a suspected killer, Taylor Shabiznes. Shabiznes? She got business in her, her, in her name, guys. I've never seen the... A last name with a word business in the name. This is where they would quickly find out that she's not only insane, but a complete psychopath. Nothing. Hey, is this blood? Does this look like blood to you? Or am I just tripping? Could possibly be blood. Hey, who did that? Hi. Hi, Taylor. How's it going? Officer Russell with the crew at police department. Oh snap, she's like, uh oh, am I screwed, bro? The police are here. There, you have one more for you. You have one more for you. Just put your head back with you. You got blood on your head. Yeah, yeah, blood on. The cops were searching Taylor's property on a warrant and discovered bloody footprints next to her car and blood literally on her hand. Dang, man, that's too much. She, knew, she ain't even wash her hands, bro. Like, if you saw someone with blood on their hands. You'd be suspicious, right, guys? First of all, blood, it, it you know, ugh, gross. Pretty painful to bleed, right, guys? But upon searching her apartment, they found the very thing they had been called to find in the first place. A human head in a bucket, first discovered by the victim's own mother. The police wasted no time in getting her into custody. Dude, that's so tragic, man. To find a head in the bucket, man. The we don't know if it's a male or female head, though. Where one of the most chilling interrogations of all time would begin. I hate this fucking outfit. Well, a few hours ago, the police were dispatched to, uh... She's gonna be wearing an outfit like that quite often, right, guys? And, uh, we, we can't feel remorse for that, you know what I mean? Not with what she did. It's, it's too much. She's gonna have to chill with the uh, whole, uh, whole decapitation. Not like she's gonna be able to do that much in jail, guys. You know what I mean? She's gonna be faced with the same kind of uh, uh people as her, bro. You know what I mean? Oops. Pierce calls the Shad. Tyrion. Do you know Shad? I know how to name Shad. Yeah, uh, the name Shad. That's also an interesting name, bro. A lot of interesting names here. Your ex boyfriend. Yeah. Well, they found a kind of disturbing stuff at the house there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. She said, oh, really? Come on now. That, that sounds guilty right, up, right off the bat. A lot of blood. Basically, Shad's head. Yeah. Up. It's immediately obvious how stone-faced and cold Taylor is being. She's showing ass. Guys, was she trying to go by? Oh man, it's sad that, you know, they, they even have a list of serial killers here, and I don't think that does the best, because, you know, there's been a lot of, there's a lot of mass shooting. there's been a lot of mass shootings in 2023. I don't think there should be, like, you know, anything glorifying something like this happening, bros, in my opinion. Absolutely no emotion about anything, including the goriest details of the case. Only managing to mutter, that's fucked up, in regards to the severed head. Look at her, stone cold, like, she, she ain't got no... 
She's just chilling. Like, she ain't got no reaction there, basically. Often, psychopaths like to talk up their own crimes as it gives them a sense of self-gratification, but we haven't even begun to see exactly how insane she is. Where's the rest of this body? It's there. It's at the house. It is in the house? Hey, bro, straight up let all those uh, let the body inside the house as well, bro. Ugh. Imagine the smell, like the dead body smell. That's so disgusting. Disgusting, right, guys? What happened? It's a good question because I blacked out during that time. Were um, you two being intimate, having sex? It was getting there. Just getting there. Okay. So will this be considered foreplay? Yeah. That's a wrong kind of floor, foreplay. I, that's the worst kind of foreplay. No one wants to do that kind of foreplay, right, guys? Disgusting. You guys done something like this in the past? Not like that. Do you use manual strangulation during sex at all? Um, a manual strangulation? Yes, 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 yes. Taylor claims that she and Shad were being intimate that night and she'd used a dog chain to choke him. But apparently this wasn't unusual for them. But the man put a chain around his neck as part of a sex act. Oh my gosh. That evening she just didn't stop until he was almost dead. That's too much, man. She also mentions how, how did he how did he come up with that? Like a that she'd been smoking meth that night. Like what? Oh my gosh. Something that definitely could have contributed to the horrifying events that followed. <laughs> Guys, I used to be an addict, and I never thought about doing anything like that, bros. You know what I mean? Body there. So she's still, she's still high, then, right, guys? So we're gonna take the hits of one. I like that. You liked it. Like that. So you dismembered the body too? Yeah. Well, what did you do with the? Uh, she's being straight up, like you know, glor. What a sick individual, right guys? It's not something that's to be praised here whatsoever. She's gonna, she's gonna spend a long time thinking about how, th how she thought she was cool in prison, right guys? It turns out that Taylor had not only choked out and beheaded Shad, but also dismembered multiple parts of his body and hidden them throughout the apartment. Just this. Dude, that's so gross, man. In the victim's house of all places as well. This thought alone is grim, but exactly how is another story entirely. How did you dismember his body then? With what? Knives, 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 knives. Knives? Just more than one knife? Four. Where'd you get those from? Kitchen. You weren't sharp? No, no. It was alright. Bread knife works good. Bread knife? A bread knife works good, yeah. Really? I had to use it. It was alright. Yeah. Dang, bro. I know the detective has to keep, like, their emotions, like, uh... You know, like, uh, you know, under control here, but I'm, I'm sure in his mind, he's like, what the frick is going on, bro? That's, too, that's all bad. Uh, I got a lazy last night, so. Once Shad was dead, Taylor sawed off his limbs with a blunt bread knife and tossed each individual piece of his body into a black bag the police later found in the basement. But somehow, the most shocking part of all of this is how casually she's talking about it. It's almost as if she doesn't see anything wrong with what she's done. Psychopathic murderers often take pride in their work and enjoy the attention that it brings them. Ted Bundy, for example, was constantly delighted to speak to the press for likely the same reason Taylor is laughing about what she did. Yeah, it's not funny, man. Narcissism. Taylor is saying that this was an accident, but the joy she's getting out of explaining every tiny detail... Bro. All bad, all bad. I, I, I'm just in awe here, guys. Uh, it's not cool. So the detective implies that while she maybe didn't plan it, she certainly had no issues with what she did. For the next five minutes, Taylor describes how 
As in, as in, she dismembered the body and everything, bro. She cuddled with his body after killing him, and how she used parts of his dismembered body, specifically his genitals. We pick the interview back up as she continues to bluntly describe the chilling events of that night. You do anything particular with the head or the body? Or did you do the blood wrapping all the time? It's still on the air, still on the top. There's a shower in the basement. You go in the next level and it just comes out of the room and it's probably still over there. What are you doing? And she's like mumbling and stuff, guys. She must be still high. Yeah, but all well, I drained his head. Well, like after I saw his blood, I was like, "Oh, the bucket was in there, still blood in this bucket because it's coming out of the head." Should have took the brains and all, but I didn't. Do that really. Oh, gross, man! I can't believe it. I'm, I'm ashamed of her. And then I. Look at so you cleaned his head in the shower and then dumped the bucket. Yeah. Oh. Not only is Taylor comfortable with dismembering and beheading her former lover, kind of this makes me feel just sick to my stomach, guys. Lover, but it seems she was also fine with draining and washing his head, and possibly even removing his brain. It's unclear why she felt. Prepping of the head suggests incomplete hiding, leading to questions about her intentions with the it. We need to do this right now as things really aren't adding up. She I mean, she couldn't... She couldn't do much, so that, that's, it's not a useful thing to do that, bro. She had already discarded and hidden the rest of the body, so if she was attempting to hide it, then she would want to dispose of the head too. There is something much deeper at play here, and the detective is desperate to figure out what. So when he, when he put the chain on his neck, he thought that you guys were going to have kinky sex. You think that's what Chad was thinking, maybe? Yeah. What were you thinking? I was going to do the same thing. You know, I was going in, and I did. And I went in. But then he was like, choke me. But he didn't really say it, so I'm like, he put it on his neck. I already know I'm going to choke him. And I did. But before you, the chain went around his neck, were you? And that's the last time she's gonna have bottled water for a while, right, guys? They give a, they give them little snacks and stuff, but they're not really the friend here, and for good reason, especially against this girl. She's too much. Chad, like kissing or any foreplay or anything? No, we were chilling at home. We just chilling. So all of a sudden, the, the chain went around his neck. Yeah. How oh, come? I'm just trying to to get it. He likes it. All right. So I was gonna walk him like a dog. And he wanted that? I have no idea what I was going to do it anyway. <laughs> okay. And you're claiming it was his idea? No, it was his idea. It was all him. All right, so oh. you're on the bed. The chain goes around his neck and you start choking him. And you just realized that he was going to die or what? I'm just like, shit. I think I went a little too far because, like, like, I, I was blacking out while I was doing it, right? And then I like, thought, and then, like, I look at him, I'm like, shit, he's already purple. I'm like, fuck, I'm like, I don't know if he's fucking, is he good, is he good? But then, like, when I woke up. Yeah, that's so sad, man. Apparently she blacked out here, guys. Ah. Uh, like, I never blacked out while doing that. When I was addicted, I never blacked out. Well, like, during the black, I'm like, shit. I didn't mean for all this to happen, and I'm like, I fucked up, I know I fucked up, I'm like, shit. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's what happened. This is the closest Taylor has come to remorse in the entire interrogation, but it's so heavily undermined by everything else she said, it's impossible to believe she's being genuine. It's likely that she's only saying this because she knows that showing some remorse could help her defense and get her a lighter sentence. In fact, she probably still, uh, barely processing it, right guys? She doesn't know the consequences of her actions, I think. Throughout the entire interrogation, it seems as though she's been attempting to do this very thing. Taylor's story is that she got home with Shad and almost immediately grabs the chain and started choking him. Then she suddenly blacked out, saw him dead in front of her, and despite not wanting him to be dead, didn't call an ambulance and instead dismembered him, played with his body, and then laughed about
I know, man. About it with police. Wow. Yeah, she actually laughed. Like, come on, bro. We're not. I never thought about doing anything like this while on or the influence. These don't ever, bro. I just want to say that I've been addicted for like eight years or something, man. Don't sound like never, never did anything like the that. actions of an innocent person, and the detectives don't think so either. The case was brought to trial almost immediately, where Taylor would continue to show just how insane she really is. Take a look at her demeanor as Shad's best friend testified in front of court. When I got there, I was, we were just chilling, chopping it up, like how we always do. He said chopping it up. Not the best term, use of terms right there, guys, you know what I mean? After what she did to the body, like, what are these? I would not, I would, I would not pick those words when describing what they're doing. And, uh, basically, um, I was... Like, Taylor was. She probably laughing at what he said right there, right, guys? I was thinking, asking, like, do you wanna, do you wanna hang out with Shad? She was asking me, like, for consent to hang out with Shad, to, like, to bring him over, and I was like, yeah, that's fine, that's cool. This behavior continued for the entire trial so far, as she smiled, smirked, and laughed her way through the whole thing. But it seems that. Why is she not in jail uniform, guys? This didn't give. Did they give her like different, like regular clothes for the this? The jury a great impression of her as she found out when the verdict was cast. I see her reaction here, cause she, she's she's gonna know the sentence here for sure, right, guys? Okay. The first verdict reads as follows: We, the jury, find the defendant Taylor Denise Shabiznis guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. Dated this date, July 26th, 2023. Dang, this happened very recently. Signed by the four person. A very, very recently, guys. Taylor Shabiznis was convicted of first degree murder, mutilating a corpse, and sexual assault. As of this video's upload, she's awaiting her sentence, but is facing life in prison or even the Now she now she in her jail uniform, right, guys? Death sentence. If you enjoy true. We got a recent comments about this, man. That's one of the best detectives I've ever seen. He did everything correctly. He never once let his mo emotions dictate his questions, which is an insane salute to him. The sheer amount of co composure detected detective had to deal with an insanity. This has to be so the death sentence. Happened just a few miles from me. Something like this going around this on a regular old D day is completely unaware. The whole case is chilling. Her mannerisms made it worse. She was so calm and barely reacted. She's the definition of evil, bro. Yeah, I'm legit. Like, uh, I, 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 I'm kind of glad this video is done because I don't want to hear more about the case, and I hope she gets like a bad sentence and stuff. But yeah, guys, that's our video. Check out Doctor Insanity in the description. I'll see you guys next one later.